everybody. Welcome to my suburban oasis. It's been a little bit since I've seen you, about a week, and I'm excited to be continuing to work on my seedlings and my gardening. And um, it's definitely trial and error right now in terms of what I can and can't do because of my surgery. But um, I am up and at them as much as I can be. So uh, for those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. My name's Soleil. I garden in a zone 5B. I live in mid-Michigan and I am starting some awesome seeds right now. I've got quite a few seedlings that are going on. And so we're gonna take a little look at what I'm doing with those. And uh, we're gonna also put some of those outside in the mini greenhouse. And then we're gonna take a look outside at what's coming up. All right, let's get started. So, The first seedlings that I want to talk about are my nasturtiums. So these are so pretty. They have filled out so well. I'm actually thinking I might have planted them a couple weeks too early, but it was either plant before the surgery or plant after the surgery. And I'm glad that I did plant before the surgery. I think I'll be able to um, hold these off long enough to get them in the ground. What I did with these is I pinched them. So um, I just pinched back the top of them and they're really branching out nicely so that I get additional vines. I have three in each one of these pots, so I have a ton of them, but I'm really excited about having them because I've never had them in my garden before. And these are a peach and uh, pink varieties. And so I'm really looking forward to having that color. Now I also in this tray have a whole bunch of coleus and you'll see I have another whole tray of coleus. These have not yet gotten to the point where I feel like I need to pinch them, but they're growing on really well. I think they have plenty of room in this pot. Even though it looks like there's a lot of um, plants in each one of these pots, they're definitely not root bound. Um, there's lots of room for the roots to grow still, so we're good with those. Next up, I'm just gonna show you my coleus. And this is my whole tray. And I also have one Hookera coral boughs, which is right here. And that's the Miss Marvel variety or Marvel. I keep thinking of the marvelous Miss Marvel whenever I talk about this one, but it's the, um, I think it's called the marvelous marble. I don't know you guys. <laughs> um, anyways, I have, I have it in my yard right now. It's really pretty. It's kind of a marbled green with a little bit of uh, red veining and it's just beautiful. So I'm excited to have that. I only got one out of the seeds, but I did buy the seeds last year. Um, so they may not have been as good at germinating this year. And then all of the colors on these, I've got some yellow and some red and yellow and some dark purple and pinks. So this is going to really help brighten up some of the spaces in my uh, garden that are in shade and as well as some in the sun. Those also still have plenty of room to grow, so I'm keeping them in their tray for a little bit longer. Next up, let's talk a little bit about clematis. So I have quite a few clematis this year. I didn't have any idea or plans to buy a ton of clematis, but it's what happened. And I'm really excited about it because I really wanna create more vertical interest, especially with flowering. And so a quick way to do that is with clematis. I did plant several last year in my garden and I planted multi-blue, I planted um, Mrs. Ripple, and there was one other one Oh, um, oh, I can't remember the name of it right now, but I planted those last year. And so I expect that those are going to put on more of a show this year. I didn't have as much time that I got them started indoors. So they didn't have as much of a head start. These really do. So what I have here is the Ville de Lyon Clematis. And this one is um, a pink one. And what I'm doing with these is just pinching them out so that they continue to branch. As I pinch off the top two leaves, when the next two branches come off, I pinch them again. And that will help to make sure that they come out much more bushy. And I'm really thrilled at the growth that they're having. You can see some of the differences in the size of the leaves that they have. Um, it's really quite striking. But I'm enjoying growing these on. 
and they're doing really well here and I think I'm probably going to keep them inside at least for another couple of weeks and then I'll probably put them out into my mini greenhouse. So I have of those I have the Ville de Leon, I have the Niobe and this Niobe one is going to be like a deep burgundy similar to the one that I have on my mailbox right now and this one is the Comtesse du Bur uh, Bouchard and it is going to be a pink one. So I thought it might be helpful to show you just how I pinch these back as these vine out. So right here you can see that this one has two leaves on the side and then the shoot is starting to come up through the middle. So all I'm going to do is take my fingernails and pinch that out and you can see now that's going to put out two new stems from where that one stem was before. And this one is the Ramona clematis and this one is going to be purple. Then I also got the Duchess of Edinburgh. That's the other one that I grew last year. This one is a white one, so it's very pretty and uh, very full as well. And this one actually has two stems in it. And then finally, a uh, Molte Blue. This is one that I recently, very recently planted, just picked it up, I think last week. So it just has one little stem, um, but it is growing on and greening up really well. So I expect to have lots of flowers and I can't wait to show you my mom bought me for my birthday a couple of trellises to go with a couple of new pots that I got because I bought so many clematis. I think they're going to look gorgeous. I've been doing a lot of pinching. This is an entire tray of uh, snapdragon. So these are the black print snapdragon and they're doing really well. They're still pretty small but they had a pretty good growth just recently putting on all of them had a second layer so I have pinched them all off now so I expect them to branch out and continue to grow on strong. These are going to be gorgeous. This tray also has more snapdragons. I did a ton of snapdragons so we're going to see lots of those around in pots and throughout the garden this year. And then I just decided to sow some basil so I did the purple opal basil and I did some sweet Genovese basil and um, it might be a little bit early for that but I'm okay if they have to stay inside for another month. They're not super fast growing indoors because it's not that warm. But I love basil. So in this tray we have pink gomfrina and so I have just recently potted these up into a bigger space and these are some new ones that I got from the bootstrap farmer. I think they have some really good quality pots there and so I wanted to give them a try and so I have four rows. There's uh, 16 of these pots and there's most of them have two of the gomfrina in there so I'm looking forward to utilizing that maybe around the base of some cannas or along with some of the nasturtium. We'll see how this bus pairs up. I'm still trying to think about how I'm going to use all of these. I know there are some really good garden planners out there amongst you, um, but that's not me. I kind of like to pick the flowers that I like and then figure out how to put them together as I go. Um, then I have a row of some white wave petunias here, and those are growing on pretty good now. Um, they were growing a little bit slow and I just potted them up into a little bit looser mix of soil so I think their roots are, are taking off now. And then here I have put all of the seeds that I had collected from my sparky blue clematis and they look like they were growing and so I just potted them up into here. You still can't see them because uh, they were just beginning to germinate but they should be under that soil if I'm successful and, and come up through it soon. Then behind that we have the Veronica and uh, those are doing really well. And then behind it you can hardly even see, again, those teeny tiny Calicarpa beautyberry seedlings. They are so small, they're growing so slow. And then my tomatoes, I just potted those up and I wanted to share with you that if you're tomatoes are getting a little bit leggy, a good thing to do with them is to pot them down further. So I just potted them down to the very bottom of their leaves so that those roots could begin to make some adventitious roots. 
and, um, and continue to um, increase the amount of root mass and have a little bit less legginess for tomatoes that helps create a sturdy plant. And then finally, this last row is the strawberry gold marigolds. So these are looking really healthy and I wanted to get those potted up into a little bit bigger container for their roots as well. Aren't those gorgeous with the colors in the red and green foliage? All right, let's go check out what I'm gonna take out into the mini greenhouse and look around the yard. So I have a very small mini greenhouse and it's starting to warm up outside. Tonight it's gonna to be a low of 33 and when I look at my 10 day forecast, it's not going to freeze. So I'm gonna take these violas that have been growing on and I'm gonna put them in the greenhouse. And I'm gonna first, I'm gonna take them out of here and just set them directly into the tray because that will make it easier for me to do bottom watering. Next to these, I have a couple of primroses that my mom got me for uh, after my surgery. So I'm also gonna put those in the greenhouse because they have enough leaf uh, enough leaves on them that I am concerned about them staying out until they get a little bit more hardened off. In addition to them being in the mini greenhouse, I am going to keep this cover on because it helps to keep a little bit of the humidity in and will help to keep them warmer uh, this first night that they're in the greenhouse. So let's get these in. I'm excited to show you this next tray because it's just so cute. These are my uh, bib lettuce and I just potted these up. Aren't these trays cute? These are from the bootstrap farmer also and they have them in different colors like pink and purple and orange and so i thought wow that just looks so much like spring doesn't it I also have a rosemary bush in here. I'm just trying to overwinter it. And I'm gonna put my purplicious irises in as well. Those are doing so good, but they're taking up room in the house. And I think they'll be just as happy out here because these are a perennial, so. All right. We'll check on these uh, pretty much every day just to make sure they're looking good. And uh, probably within a couple of days, I'll take the extra cover domes off of these. Now I will have to watch because it could um, get really cold. Like if we have a freeze, then I would want to still bring these in overnight. Okay, so it's a little bit awkward. I got my brace on. I am allowed to unlock it now, <laughs> but um, I certainly have to sit in some strange positions to do this, um, but at least I can do it. So this is a Bobo Panicle Hydrangea, and the hydrangeas need to be pruned every year, and the Panicle Hydrangeas really like sun, and they bloom on new wood. So these are a really easy type of hydrangea to prune, and that's because uh, you don't have to worry about pruning off any buds that will bloom this year because it will continue to bloom no matter what you do. So um, what we're going to do first is we're going to go through and look for anything that looks like it's dead or that it's diseased or it's crossing. Now I planted this last fall. I don't see anything that looks diseased. There's some very small branches that are in here. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to open this up a little bit and I'm also going to cut away some of the smaller stems that are on here. So I'm going to go right down to the base here and just use my sectors to get in here. This one is crossing into this branch right here. So we're going to go ahead and just take that whole piece off right there. And this piece right here looks like it might be dead and this one is really small so I'm going to cut that entire piece right off. 
Now the other thing that I want to do with this hydrangea is I want to try to begin to grow it up a little bit so that it grows above these boxwoods. Now I'm going to trim these boxwoods back when it gets a little bit warmer, a little closer to June. And I'm actually going to try to root them out because I really like the variegated boxwood because the color that they bring in winter is fantastic. So this branch right here, this top one, this is dead, so that's going to come out. This one here is also dead. And then next to it is another really tiny branch. And if I follow that one down, it's kind of crossing with this branch, which I like. I really like the way that this one's growing. So I'm actually going to just cut this one right down where it comes out of the main stem. Get rid of that. Same thing for this. this. This piece right here looks like it's dead, so I'm going to cut that out. And then this is a very small kind of flappy branch that won't do very well. So I'm going to go all the way and follow that one all the way down to the base of it. And I'm going to cut that out. So we really don't want the bush putting any of its energy into any of these small branches that we don't necessarily um, want to have. This one is dead right here, the small one, so I'm going to take that one out. And then if you follow this out, this is a very strange growth pattern. I don't want it growing sideways. I'm going to cut that one off. You probably can't see this very well, but there's another dead one here. And then I'm not sure I really like the growth pattern of this one that's coming all the way out to the front. Um, so I'm going to clip that one off as well. I want to begin to form some really strong branches. Now you can see where things are fairly small up here at the top. So I'm also going to prune it back a little bit to where it's a little bit stronger. And one of the things that you don't see in a lot of videos about pruning hydrangeas is they say cut it back to a bud. And that's true. But the other thing is, is to keep in mind which direction those buds are going to grow in. And you can actually see they, they alternate as they go around the stem. So if you don't want stems growing back into the bush, make sure that you trim them in a way that they're maybe going out sideways and this way, because each of them has three buds typically on the panicle hydrangea. So this one, for instance, right here, I can tell that this one has a bud here on this side, and then I don't know where any others are. The one beneath it has one coming out this way and this way. So um, I think what I wanna do is as this grows up, I want it to come out this way and I will trim off this one as it grows out. So this is gonna be cut right above one where the branch is gonna go this direction and this direction. Now, if it's gonna have a branch that's coming out this direction, then I think about what's coming out next to it. I don't want this one um, I don't want to cut above this one because it's going to come straight at that. So um, I'm just looking at it and figuring out which direction is the next growth going to come from. I hope that makes sense. Um, that way I don't have to worry about it as much next year as they grow out, they'll grow out in the direction that I really want them to. This is a similar thing that you can do with your roses as well. And I think a lot of people don't know that, but I'm actually going to cut this one because it's going towards the boxwood. So I know it looks like I'm making it into a, a skeleton, but eventually it will continue to uh, produce some really nice shoots. And this one I'm going to grow this way and this way. Well, I think that's as much pruning as I want to do on this one for today. It looks pretty good. This is questionable. It's pretty small, but I'm going to prune this every year. This one is also questionable because it's close to the other branch. Um, I'm just going to keep an eye on it. There's not really a horrible time to prune hydrangeas. Like if I want to prune them in June, I don't feel bad doing it. This is just a really good time to do it because you can see exactly what you're doing. So we'll see how this grows on. Sometimes you get a nice strong shoot from the base of the plant after you've done pruning and the roots have grown on. And then you can get rid of some of the jumbly smaller ones and it just looks even better and creates a stronger structure and form to help hold up the blooms. Well, I definitely have a lot of cleanup to do in this bed still, and things really aren't going to look super amazing here until we're able to get some fresh mulch 
and I want to be able to help my husband with that so we're going to hold off on that probably um, for at least a few more weeks and maybe a little bit more probably be closer to May by the time that we get it but I'm just encouraged to see all of the things that are popping up I mean look at the daffodils that are out front here and even over here we have some beautiful tulips along with the daffodils and all sorts of little bulbs are starting to come up so I know we're going to get some bloom soon. Underneath all of this I'm just going to cut this back really quick so you can see the leaves do a really good job of protecting in the winter time because if you look down in here look at all of that fresh growth so that's one of the reasons why I might leave some leaves over things if you have something that needs some winter protection because it's on the edge of your hardiness zone this is a good way to do it so yeah a lot of cleanup to do I'm doing it really slowly this year because of um, you know my situation right now but it's going to get done a little bit every day is going to be my motto so thanks for joining me today I hope you enjoyed getting outside with me I know the birds are enjoying it as I hear them singing Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.